Welcome to Feldspar group of minerals. So coming to the outline of the topic, it includes the introduction, general characters, physical properties, structure, chemical composition, alkali feldspars, barium feldspars and plagioclase feldspars. So what the general characters of feldspar group of minerals, they constitute the most abundant group of minerals and according to Clark, they make up about 60% of the igneous rocks. Even though uh, these uh, feldspars, they crystallize under different crystal systems like uh, triclinic and monoclinic systems, many of their uh, physical properties are very strikingly similar. And uh, the prism angles are about 120 degrees and hardness is about 6. And this, uh, the specific gravity of this group of minerals, it may vary from 2.55 to 2.75. And these feldspars are characterized by two directions of cleavages, which are parallel to the basal pinacoid that is 001 and clino or brachypinacoid that is 010. And in monoclinic feldspars, the cleavages generally, these are at right angles to one another. However, in the triclinic feldspars, but they meet at right angles and uh, slightly differing from the 90 degrees. And these feldspars are generally useful in the ceramic and glass in Coming to the physical properties of uh, feldspar group of minerals. Color, it is usually white and pink, sometimes gray or brown and also colorless yellow, orange and different colors like red, black, blue and green. And uh, they have uh, uh, the streak of white and uh, the luster is vitreous and pearly on the uh, cleavage faces. And uh, the coming to the diaphanity, these uh, feldspar group of minerals usually are translucent to opaque. They are not that much transparent. They are rare, rarely transparent as we see in the case of uh, quartz group of minerals. So coming to the cleavage, they are perfect in two directions. That means these cleavage planes, they intersect at 90 degrees. And the, according to the most scale of hardness, they have 6 to 6.5 and specific gravity 2.5 to 2.8. And uh, how we identify is known as a diagnostic property. So these have the diagnostic properties like uh, perfect cleavage and these cleavage faces intersecting at uh, right angles that is 90 degrees and they have the hardness of 6 to 6.5 and uh, specific gravity and pearly luster on cleavage faces is uh, all these are the important diagnostic property we can identify uh, the feldspar group of minerals with this diagnostic properties and uh, coming to the crystal system they crystallize in monoclinic triclinic and uh, coming to the chemical composition so they have a generalized chemical composition like uh, uh, x uh, it is represented by X, Al, Si4, O8, where X is usually potassium, sodium or calcium. So this X part, it uh, constitutes potassium, sodium or calcium, but rarely it can be uh, like barium, rubidium and strontium. And, uh, other minerals. Coming to the physical properties. Twinning. Twinning, it's a very important property in the feldspars and potash feldspars are usually twinned on three laws like uh, Kalsbad law, Bavinola and Manbeck law. Whereas in the Kalsbad law, 100 is the twin plane and in the Bavinola, 021 is the twin plane and in Manbeck law, according to the Manbeck law, 001 is the twin plane. And generally, the, this orthoclase, it is pink in color and damage on stone, it is a variety of the microcline. Coming to the application or uses, uh, these are used, these are important raw materials for the manufacture of glass industry and then ceramic industry, paints industry and then they are also used in plastics and many other products. Varieties of the orthoclase, uh, there are so many varieties of orthoclase like labradorite, oligoclase, microcline and other feldspar minerals have been used in uh, uh, gemstone industry. Coming to the chemical composition, feldspars are aluminosilicates of potassium, sodium, calcium and rarely barium. And they are considered as isomorphous mixtures of the four substances. These are like uh, they are the isomorphous mixtures of orthoclase, albite, anardite and celsian. Coming to the orthoclase, it is a potassium aluminosilicate. It is represented by KALSA3O8 and albite, it is a potassium aluminosilicate. That is uh, albite is sodium aluminosilicate. It is NaALSA3O8 and anardite is represented by calcium aluminosilicate, CaAL2SI2O8 and celsian, it is a barium feldspar and uh, it has a composition of BaAl2 Si2O8. Coming to the isomorphism, so it has a property in all the feldspars, part of the silica, this is uh, replaced by aluminium and uh, as the this alkali metal ions are held in spaces in the tightly, they are uh, very tightly held in the crystal spaces or crystal structure. Substitution of one alkali ion from the other, it uh, results in number of the varieties. For example, if you take the replacement of part of potassium by sodium, it results in a variety called soda orthoclase. Suppose the uh, orthoclase is klsa 3 8 In this uh, orthoclase, so part of the potassium is replaced by sodium and it 
it results in soda arthroclase. Similarly, if you take the replacement of potassium by barium, uh, it results in a variety called hyalophane, which is intermediate between arthroclase and celsian. And these plagioclase feldspars are mixtures of albite and anorthite in all proportions. That means the constituents, uh, it may range, the composition range from albite to anorthite. And in the plagioclase feldspars, the sodium silica of albite is replaced by calcium, aluminum or anorthite and uh, the vice versa. Like calcium, and, uh, uh, calcium, aluminum of anorthite is replaced by sodium silica of albite. So, these are tectosilicates, that means the feldspars are tectosilicates, they have the framework silicates. So, in this uh, tectosilicates, all the tetrahedra, they share all the corners with the neighboring tetrahedra and form a three-dimensional framework. So, here all the tetrahedra, that means all the corners, all the tetrahedra share all the corners with the neighboring tetrahedra. That's why they form a three-dimensional framework and uh, that's why they result in the chemical composition that is SiO2. And uh, in orthoclase, one-fourth of the silicon is substituted by one aluminium ion. And for every silicon ion is substituted by aluminium and one potassium ion is introduced in the large interstices in the framework. So, these are the tectosilicate framework. It is also known as a framework silicate. So, here the silica oxygen ratio is 1 is to 2. Then alkali feldspar minerals coming to, so these are like orthoclase that is KALSI308 and sanidine. Uh, it belongs to the monoclinic system and it is represented by the composition potassium, sodium, aluminosilicate and microcline. Potassium aluminosilicate, it is, uh, it belongs to triclinic crystal system. And anorthoclase, it is also triclinic and uh, it has the composition like sodium and potassium aluminosilicate. Whereas the sanidine, it is a stable uh, at the highest temperatures. So it is a high temperature uh, potassium feldspar and uh, microcline it is formed at the lowest and suppose if you take perthite it is a typical texture in alkali feldspar this is formed due to so this perthetic texture it, it is formed in alkali feldspars due to exolution of the contrasting alkali feldspar compositions during the cooling of the intermediate composition and the perthetic textures in the alkali feldspars of many granites it can be seen with the naked eye and microperthetic textures in crystals are visible using a microscope whereas the uh, cryptoperthetic texture it can be seen only with an electron microscope. Then this as I have explained the sanidine is a high, uh, the stable at the highest temperatures and microcline is at the lowest and uh, the perthite is a typical texture in alkali feldspar. It is formed due to exolution of the alkali feldspar composition. And coming to the physical properties of orthoclase feldspars, they, they have the form or habit, they are generally prismatic and also some of the varieties are massive, granular and lamellar and color usually white or gray and also red, yellow and green and uh, the generally streak is white and uh, they have the vitreous or pearly luster and uh, conchoidal to uneven fracture and they have the perfect basal, same, the properties are same as in the case of general feldspars. So, they have the perfect basal pinacoidal and good clino pinacoidal cleavages at uh, right angles to one another and they have generally the hardness of 6 and tenacity is brittle. And how do you distinguish the orthoclase? So, this is the distinguishing feature. Orthoclase is distinguished from microcline and plagioclase by the absence of striations. Whereas, due to trunning, striations are present on the crystal phase of microcline and plagioclase. But these striations are absent on the crystal phases of orthoclase. So, this is the important distinguishing feature. How we distinguish orthoclase from other, uh, uh, this is the important physical property. How we can identify uh, the orthoclase from the microcline and plagioclase. So, coming to the varieties of uh, this feldspar, that is adularia, it is usually white or colorless, but it may be transparent and sometimes cloudy also. Frequently, it shows an excellent opalescence and uh, if shows is opalescence, then it is called as a moonstone. Then this moonstone is used as gemstone and similar varieties of albite are also called moonstone and it is formed at 400 degrees centigrade temperature. Coming to the another variety that is known as a sanidine, it is colorless or white or gray. It has a high temperature uh, uh, glassy feldspar. This is formed uh, uh, above 950 degrees centigrade and it occurs in volcanic rocks like rhyolites, stracites, etc. So, generally, uh, it also, uh, apart from the granites, cyanides, rhyolites, stracites, it also occurs in metamorphic nice sunshades and it also occurs in sedimentary rocks like sandstones and conglomerates. And generally, uh, coming to the association, it is generally associated with other feldspars, quartz, uh, muscovite, biotite, hornblende, etc.
According to the optical properties, generally these are uh, negative except uh, low albite with uh, positive nature. That means it has a positive uh, optical property and the color, it is a uh, colorless but may be cloudy. If it is altered, it ex exhibits uh, cloudy nature. And uh, this habit is uh, euhedral and prismatic. Euhedral means when the crystal faces are very uh, tightly, uh, crystal faces are well, very well developed, it is known as a euhedral. And cleavage, generally they develop two cleavages like 010 and 001 at 90 degrees. And the refractive index is low, it is less than 1.54. And generally this alters to clay minerals, which is very common in potash feldspars. And as alteration increases, the clay becomes sericite. It is a very fine uh, clay. And by refringence, uh, it is of low second order colors. Coming to the microcline, the chemical composition is potassium aluminum silicate, KALSI308. And orthoclase and microcline, mo mostly these are the dimorphous forms of the same chemical substance that is KALSI308. And orthoclase is formed at higher temperatures than microcline. This is the only difference that orthoclase is formed at higher temperature and microcline is formed at low temperature, though they have the same chemical composition like KALSI308. And uh, coming to the crystal system, it forms in the triclinic crystal system. And uh, the former habit, generally the crystals are similar to those of orthoclase, consisting of prismatic crystals, also massive and granular. Color is white, gray and sometimes flesh red also. Bright green variety of microcline is called Amazon stone and it is used as a gemstone. And uh, the streak of uh, microcline, it is white and luster is vitreous and it has an even fracture. And it has perfect basal pentacordial cleavage and hardness is ar around 6 to 6.5 and uh, it has a uh, brittle tenacity. Then occurrence, it occurs abundantly, most abundantly in igneous rocks like granites, pegmatites and etc. And uh, it is generally associated with the quartz, muscovite and other uh, typical associates. So these are the important associates are quartz and muscovite. Coming to the barium feldspars, barium feldspars are also considered as alkali feldspars and uh, barium feldspars they form as the result of substitution of barium as I have explained in the last slide. So they are formed uh, due to the result of the substitution of the barium for the potassium in the mineral structure and the barium feldspars are monoclinic and they include like uh, celsian and hylophane. Celsian, this composition is barium aluminum silicate BaAl2Si2OA whereas a hylophane it contains both potassium and barium aluminum silicate. So coming to the plagioclase feldspars, plagioclase feldspars are also called as the soda lime feldspars and they form an isomorphous series with uh, albite to anorthite. So albite at one end and anorthite at the other end. So albite is represented by sodium aluminum silicate, NaAlSi3 white and another end anorthite like CaAl2 Si2 white. So the chemical compositions are listed below like uh, uh, what's the mineral like uh, the ranges from albite to anorthite. So the mineral uh, albite is represented as AB100 to AN0 and AB90 to AN10 and it has a specific gravity of 2.61 and oligoclase AB90 to AN10 and AB70 and AN30 it has a specific gravity of 2.64 and andesine uh, it has the chemical composition like uh, AB90, AN10 and AB70 and AN30 and it has a specific gravity of 2.67 and labradorite AB50, AN50, AB30, AN70 means and uh, it has a specific gravity of 2.70 and bituanite that is albite 30, albite 70 and albite 10 and al anorthite 90 and it has a specific gravity of 2.72 and anorthite AB10 and a anorthite 90 and albite 0 and anorthite 100 and it has a specific gravity of 2.75. As shown in this table, the plagioclase feldspar, the percentage of albite if you see, it is it's gradually decreasing from albite to anorthite and percentage of anorthite is gradually increasing from 10 to 100. So, uh, and uh, the physical properties uh, like uh, specific gravity is also gradually increasing from albite to anorthite. If you take the albite, the specific gravity is about 2.61, whereas if you see uh, labradorite, it is 2.70 and bituanite 2.72 and anorthite 2.75. So, these physical properties like specific gravity it is gradually increasing from albite to anorthite. So, coming to the uh, overall physical properties like crystal system, it uh, crystallizes in triclinic crystal system and uh, it has the former habit of uh, prismatic crystals and also massive and granular and it has a whitish grey color and uh, streak is white and uh, vitreous or pearly luster and it exhibits an even fracture and it has the cleavage like perfect basal pentacoidal and less good brachypentacoidal cleavages and hardness it has a hardness of 6 to 6.5 and it has a brittle tenacity and it occurs in igneous rocks 
and uh, like granites diorites gabbros basalts etc and is uh, generally associated with agate hornblende pyrite and other feldspars so here this is about the uh, plagioclase mineral and how the percent sodium aluminosilicate is ranging and here the percent of calcium aluminosilicate is ranging yeah this is about the chemical composition how it is ranging from sodium aluminosilicate albite and oligoclase sodium and calcium aluminosilicate and zinc sodium aluminosilicate calcium aluminosilicate like that the percentage is varying uh, slowly the um, percentage of sodium is uh, decreasing and calcium is increasing so this is about uh, the diagram which represents the chemical composition overall that is sodium aluminosilicate and uh, uh, calcium aluminosilicate the plagioclase feldspars and these are the alkali feldspars and uh, how the chemical composition is varying can be seen in this diagram coming to the optical properties of these group of minerals color it is colorless but may be cloudy if it is altered to other type of minerals and uh, habit it is subhedral it is not that much like uh, euhedral it is subhedral no, the crystal faces are not that much developed and prismatic and cleavage two cleavages 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 at 90 degrees and refractive index generally uh, less than 1.54 and generally it alters to clay minerals which is uh, uh, common in potash feldspars and as alteration increases the clay becomes sericite and uh, birefringence is low and uh, first order colors and another important property is zoning it is an important property in plagioclase feldspars and is particularly common in the feldspars in extrusive rocks and uh, there are types of uh, zoning like normal zoning reverse zoning and oscillatory zoning so normal zoning occurs when there is a continuous change from a calcium rich core that means it is uh, present in the center calcium rich core to the sodium rich margin if there is a continuous change from calcium rich uh, core to uh, sodium rich margin whereas the reverse zoning it occurs when there is a continuous change from sodium rich core and calcium rich margin and oscillatory zoning it may also occur uh, with separated zones of equal extinction it's occurring in a random manner thank you